there are many types of internet forums for many types of people, and often there's a few forums for each. Cosplayers, anime fans, gamers, play-by-post role-playing forums, craftspeople, and nerds of every caliber. On a forum dedicated to Otokonoko, individuals who were assigned male at birth, but who for one reason or another present in a feminine manner and pass as girls, three such people meet. Three such people of a similar young age. Three such people who live quite close to each other. In fact, close enough that they can meet up in person on farm. Three teenagers who, for all around them, appear as normal teenage girls meet up. They stop by a cafe. They start by talking about where they get their clothes. A sister, a friend, online shopping. Then the question is asked, why do you cross-dress? One says it is because he was a woman in a previous life and sometimes sees visions of that life. The one who asked refuses to elaborate, but the reason is truly tragic, as we later learn. Almost as tragic as what our last member of the trio states. She says that she isn't cross-dressing. It's when she has to dress as a boy that she's cross-dressing. If she could, she'd stay in girl clothes all the time. The one who refused to give his reason for cross-dressing calls them freaks and leaves. When he gets home, his mother calls the name of his sister, asking if she's come back. <sighs> A sister that has been dead for long enough that he is outgrowing her shoes. A sister that has been dead for long enough that his mother should have gotten over her denial. A sister that was a rising star, a young model, someone trying to make it big in show business. A sister he sees when he dresses up as her, so that his mother would at least look at his body, if not him as a person. These are the reasons we are given for why the three heroes of Bokura no Hentai all dress as girls. And the reasons only get built on further as their lives get entangled. This is Transfemetro Episode 3, the Trans Manga Recommendation Series, and we're at a crucial point in our journey. Strap in, because this one gets fucking wild. I think one of the things I should mention is that the mangaka of Bokura no Hentai, Fumi Fumiko, did their fucking research. Something I doubt any of the other mangaka did. In fact, I mistook for me for Oshimi Shuzo, another prominent mangaka I'll talk about another time. Fumi outright talked to a doctor and a trans woman to get the trans girl right for something I will get into shortly. I guess it makes sense why they were picked to illustrate the Otokono Kore Naidoshu the Otokonoko in Love autobiographical manga, especially when we take their art style into account. The art style is disarmingly cute. Disarmingly cute, I tell you, because our three protagonists look so fucking cute and pretty, but they're middle schoolers and a high schooler. That's what'll definitely be a turnoff for a lot of people. Because you hear that, you hear the word hentai in the title, and like me, before I give the series a chance, you probably recoil back thinking, wait, is this child porn? And the answer is no. No, it's not. It is so much deeper than that. It is an exploration of adolescent sexuality and gender without the rose-tinted glasses of Horomusuko, along with an exploration of how trauma affects us long-term. <sighs> to elaborate on that, I'm going to need to say a spoiler. In fact, a few spoilers. However, one of these is what I would dub an anti-spoiler. What's an anti-spoiler? Conventionally speaking, a spoiler is a piece of information that affects your experience with a piece of media. Anecdotally first uttered during a showing of The Sixth Sense, where one group of watchers were exiting the cinema while another group was waiting in line, 
the people who had seen the movie discussing how Bruce Willis's character had been dead the whole movie. One person waiting in line yelled, DUDE! SPOILERS! Because by knowing this piece of information, those people's experience was changed from how the creative team originally intended it. They would no longer be surprised by the twist, and no longer have a reason to buy a second ticket to watch the movie again with that new lens. An anti-spoiler, thus, is a piece of information that changes the way you experience the piece of media, but without knowing of it, you might not have ever picked up the thing in the first place. For a really recent example, I can point to Swery's The Missing, J.G. Macfield and the Island of Memories. At a glance, it appears as a simple puzzle platformer, about a girl looking for her girlfriend on a mysterious island, where the main mechanic is that she is immortal and can be torn to pieces for physics-based puzzles. And the fact you have a lesbian throwing her severed arm to weigh something down is disturbing enough to put some people off. But when you play the game, you receive a number of text messages addressed to JJ that combined with the ending and you getting all the collectibles show that you've been playing a trans woman this whole time. One that attempted to take her life, but was thankfully saved by paramedics. And now you are much more interested in picking it up, but you have been robbed of the experience of finding out yourself, hence anti-spoiler. Back to Book Run of Hentai with a regular one first. So our previous life as a woman crosser sir lied. It's not his fault though. On top of being a CSA survivor, my man's a faggot, affectionate, and an infomaniac, affectionate, who got a crush on his upperclassman. Said upperclassman would only fuck him if he dressed as a girl. So he did that and kept doing it. And thanks to being fucked up that way, he nearly fucks up the trans girl. Only nearly, because she does work through that, and they remain friends, and she still has a major crush on him. One of the crucial things here, and why it is great that this fits neatly in the middle of the manga I'm covering, is that our protagonists get good endings. And not just good endings. Here comes the anti-spoiler. After a period of isolating at home, brought on by her voice starting to change, something that happens after she comes out at school in the face of two shitty bellies by calling herself a fag and declaring that she wants to be a girl. And yeah, that's done in an all-dropping way. I will not show the panel of it. You should just read the manga. But the next time we see the trans girl, she's going to school in the girl's uniform two-thirds of the way through the manga's run. She came out to her mom, they went to a gender clinic together, and the dog there went, this bitch trans, holy shit, let her transition. And she does. This panel, this singular full-page spread, has watered my crops, has cleared my skin, has blessed my harvest and chased all the evil spirits haunting me. Look at the joy in her face. When I first saw this, I cried tears of joy. I smiled so hard, I think I cracked my beak. The trans girl gets to transition as part of the story. And the tragedy is how long she didn't get to. The tragedy is that she didn't get to be a girl from the start. In her own words, it was when she was wearing boys' clothes that she was cross-dressing. And with that result for her... She just has regular teen girl troubles. Love, what high school to go to, you know, usual stuff. It's our other two that need to work through their shit. And they do. When I asked the resident expert at Princess Marika for input on this script, for quotes, what she told me was, Bokura no hentai may be hard for some to read due to its content, but it truly is a series that deeply cares for its characters that wants you to care about its characters. Fumiko Fumi wants you to cheer for them with every milestone they reach, and you well want to. And 
I could not agree with that statement anymore, even though I want to. This is why you should read it. And not just read it, but stick with it. You will form deep connections with these troubled teens. And then feel joy and relief when things go well for them. Which they will. I know it looks like they won't. I know it feels like a thriller. Especially with the ghost of the sister haunting the one pretending to be her. But things do work out. And I want you to believe that things will work out. Because I need to believe it. And I don't want to be alone in that belief. The manga finished December of 2015. The next two started a month apart in 2018, but finished a year apart. So next time, the folly of falling for a straight girl when you're a girl. Hey there! Hi! Thanks for watching that video, I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed making this. Bokura no Hentai isn't as obscure as Himekoto, but it's still pretty obscure and I want people to read it. Actually, Marika started a whole thing about trying to get it localized in the West officially. It didn't really go anywhere, but maybe if you all watch this video and show your support, and make your voices heard that you want an official Western localization of Bokura no Hentai, we might get it. Hell, who knows? I'm not big, but we can make this video big, and with that we can make people actually get the book. <laughs> now, as y'all are used by now, this here is the Patreon thanks section. Because I have a Patreon page, I have a coffee, I have an itch.io page, a uh, Tumblr, Twitter, what else? What else do I have? Twitch. I have all these platforms, and because of uh, all these platforms, I have to do a Patreon thanks. So, $20 tier, Aurora, $10 tiers, Kylie the Healer Witch, and Phoenix Master Giovanni. And then, $5 tiers, everybody else who's not getting their names right, but who I extremely, extremely appreciate. If you'd like to be part of either of these columns, it's just, well, 5, 20, or 10 bucks on Patreon, which is linked down below. If you don't want to support on Patreon, you can just do a one-time edge donation, and you can follow me elsewhere. I've been Katie, this has been Transfer Metro, and no one actually, before I end, before I end this whole segment, I'm just gonna say I'm recording this in Chill Out VR in Fur Hub, and it's a lovely little world, so you should definitely get Chill VR and come visit Fur Hub. It has a desktop mode, so you can just be here in desktop mode without needing a pair of glasses like I have. So thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you next time. For Kanojun Ni Narita Kimito Boku. Bye bye.